Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. Uh, we actually did a little bit of fishing between episodes. Uh, there was a few of us out there, Severe had found a warm ocean. We were doing a little bit of fishing, just kind of hanging out, and uh, I, I had been wanting to set up a little something. I'm going to go ahead and set it up to die. It doesn't really, because we've been working on create, it doesn't really relate to our create stuff. It actually relates to our magic progression stuff. But I want to get it set up because I know I know Severed hates Nautilus shells and Xavian hates Nautilus shells. So I'm just going to set up something automatic. That way we can kind of start feeding the server with Nautilus shells. We should have plenty for our needs. Severed should have plenty. Xavian, anybody else that needs Nautilus shells. Of course, there's a ton of different ways to get them, like from Drowned uh, or from finding the Project Vibrant Journeys, Seashells, but we're going to be doing something a little bit different, a little bit more fun, and something completely automatic that's really, really cheap to set up uh, so that we can start having those coming in as well as a lot of other stuff that's going to help us out a lot. Uh, you will notice that I did move over our create stuff. Uh, everything's set up. We also did add an additional fan for water and an additional fan for smoking. So we have all of our fan setups. Like I said, this is just kind of a workshop uh, area and we do have a little space set up here which is going to be our crushing wheels a bit later on uh, also out here i did move our cobble gems they're set up identical uh, you know we've got the sandstone the diamond block the iron um, and then the sand which actually i need to check these okay these are fine for right now i can easily turn these off because uh, i switched out and added just clutches so we can power off the drills like that and so that way we can just manually kind of shut these off, you know. That's fine for right now. Um, if we pop over, I want to show you what I got from fishing. Oh, and this. Um, this is actually the start of what's going to be an aqueduct uh, kind of line where uh, basically it's going to start up higher and it's going to fall down uh, to this. This runs down and then we'll carry on somewhere theoretically kind of in the ground or under the ground. Uh, and then decorated out the windmill area just a little bit to make this look a little bit nicer for us. And just got everything that we set up basically last episode because it was such a rush <laughs> because of all the cobble gins I was wanting to set up apparently. So got everything that we set up last episode organized. Uh, and from fishing, we got, and just it's basically just from the goldfish on, we got all this stuff. So we did get a mending volley bow, a soulbound bow. Unfortunately, no uh, fishing rods, but I did get a Nautilus shell. Uh, now, when it comes to the Nautilus shells, it should be noted that there's a lot of ways to get these, realistically. There's drown spawners, there's the Project Vibrant Journey seashells, there's the mob, the Nautilus mobs that you can kill. Uh, you know, we killed quite a few of those on ATM Spellbound, not really for any reason, but we killed a bunch of them. But the route that we're going to take is something completely automatic, and that way we can start feeding the server anybody that wants Nautilus shells. That way they'll have them. And the mod that we're going to be using, we're going to be auto-fishing today. We might do a little bit of manual fishing discussion, because I do want to kind of give aquaculture a little bit of time in the sun, so to speak. But we're going to be getting into some little logistics absolutely wonderful mod if you've never seen it i saw it on reddit a while back um and it was it's just amazing the the idea of moving things with boats is just fun uh, and we're actually going to be using it a little bit within our base as well because you know we're going to be kind of doing a little bit of playing with water and stuff with our base and our little aqueducts and things so it, it only makes sense that we have some little boats moving things uh, but we're going to be setting this up in the ocean over there that Severed found. Now, I do have a little bit of stuff that we're going to have to do. Uh, now, for right now, we're going to be going with Steam Tug. We could probably swing an Energy Tug. Both of them are a little expensive. They require some thermal stuff, but it's all pretty doable at this point, I think. Uh, but we're going to be going with a Steam Tug. So, aluminum plates, we're going to need a bit of stuff here. Let's go over. I've actually kind of moved a lot of this stuff over. Let me grab some things here piston smooth stone and you will notice right now we're eating some omu rice and some source berry rolls i decided to switch it up just a little bit uh, and switch to that and this is something that i can craft without stuff that's not stackable you know uh since we do have the chicken farm in place at this point uh which i did kill a lot of our chickens that was mainly because there were so many of them they were just churning out eggs the drawer filled up and i didn't want to cause a bunch of lag for the server until we get void upgrades technically we can swing them at the moment but they are uh, a little bit costly for us uh, 
I've got to sort things really, really bad. Okay, so let's go ahead, get some sheet metal crafted out real quick. And I'm waiting for that to turn over into smooth stone. Go ahead and get our iron sheet metal. That should be fine. Uh, the copper rod, I don't think there's... Now, there's not really an easier way to do that. Aluminum nuggets and then a plate. And for this, I should probably go ahead and process down all this copper. Uh, so we'll just throw this into the millstone, get that going. And now that we've got our water fan set up, we can start washing ores. But today we're going to be doing a little bit of stuff related to basically working our way towards crafting conduits easily. Of course, conduits, we need those for basically the whole side of magic progression. Let's go ahead and throw this on there and let that wash up. Now, I do have a hammer somewhere, but I don't feel like looking for it because I have made a complete mess of things. Okay, there's our copper. And you can see that if we wash it, we get nuggets. We get a little bit better output. We do have to uh, craft those together to turn them into ingots, but that's okay. All right, so let's go ahead. There is our copper gear. That, that, there is our copper rod. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a gold rod as well. Redstone flux coil. There is our sterling dynamo. And then we just need the red sheet metal. Oh yeah, I'll need to make another batch of sheet metal real quick. We'll use a little bit of materials here, but it's going to be it's going to be so worth it. Um, actually, this is going to produce. Not only is it going to produce the the shells for us, it's also going to produce food. It's going to produce enchantments. It's going to produce gear. It's going to produce ores. Uh, it's going to produce a lot of things. It's going to be it's going to make a lot of junk basically, and we'll have to kind of sort of dig through that junk until we get set up just a little better. But uh, it'll be well worth it. Um, oh, and I also did set up, I changed this over just a little bit, added us some lattice. There was a lot of palms over here, um, so I did thin those out just a little bit, but I was needing more saplings anyways, so. Uh, let me get just a beet. There we go. And we'll get that. And honestly, the, the steam tug is probably the most expensive thing, unless I miss something. I think the steam tug is the most expensive part. Uh, most of this is just going to require some iron and stuff. Um, I did set us up a proper mine. You'll actually notice I do have... This was our waystone from down in our little mine area. Um, I pulled that up because I went through and just grabbed all the the ores and stuff that were down there. And we are kind of moving over to our own mine. Right now it's just a mine shaft leading down. But um, it is actually right over here. Um, but like I said, it's just a mine shaft leading down right now. There is our steam tug. Then we're going to get ourselves uh, some auto fishing barges because we're going to be doing some auto fishing. Now, right here, we're going to need a bit more sheet metal, probably uh, some ropes, which we should have everything for that. Uh, and then some tackle boxes. You can see we're going to be using a lot of iron for this. Now, I do have uh, a stack here. Let's go ahead. That's done. Let's go ahead and throw in this iron and get that going. All of this, we're just gonna we're just gonna dump that in there to let it wash. Now we will be pushing onto the crusher here fairly soon. We'll get a little bit better output, uh, but I don't mind using a little bit of this stuff here. Let's go ahead and also wash up all this aluminum. There we go, and we'll toss on the aluminum okay now how many there's a stack and seven so for each of these we are going to need a tackle box uh, so we're gonna need some blocks of iron I think I'm gonna go with maybe five fishing barges I think that would be sufficient uh, also this key knife, I'll show you something if you hold your vein mine and break it boom this is awesome. I've been using this to make uh, lots of compost, so or lots of uh, bone meal. I'm going to go ahead and get some iron plates going, and I think we got enough for our other block of iron. So there's that. And then we're going to want uh, aluminum plates. We are going to need some cactus green as well. Luckily, we've got this nice little cactus farm here. 
probably end up making it automatic, you know, a little bit lighter. But for right now, this is fine. And we'll just go ahead and toss that onto there. We're about to make a bunch of green dye just because we can. Oh, and these are the seashells I was talking about. These are the ones from Project Vibrant Journeys. If you break these, you'll get like prismarine and different things. Um, I'm not breaking them. I have collected some, but that's mainly for decoration. <laughs> uh, I don't want to break them, you know. Uh, let me get my knife real quick. And let's go ahead. Clear out our wheat. Oh, whoops. Cream of the crop. Grow and gather every edible crop. Oh. Apparently there was something I hadn't, uh, I hadn't done there. Oh, and we got a music disc from something. So we are king of the farms, it looks like. Alright, and back over to here. Let's grab our nuggets. Then we'll get our cactus paste. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But let's go ahead. Uh, what is it for string? Or safety nets? Ropes? Okay. I'll have to get a little bit more grass, but that's fine. There's uh, six safety nets. And then we just need the green dye and the chest. Okay, perfect. I actually chopped down a spruce tree between episodes, and it was four right at like four stacks of spruce wood so i did have to pillar up to break it it was amazing but if we take our pestle and mortar with our cactus paste we can double up our green dye get a lot of green dye out of that let's get our tackle boxes there's five of those there is three auto fishing barges and i'm gonna need a little bit more grass to make the rest of those but i can i can probably wait until my wheat grows uh so let's take a look now at the uh, we're going to make a cedar barge just kind of for fun. And that way we can ride around with our little tugboats. Now, we'll probably end up expanding this. Right now, we're going to have one tugboat, then maybe we'll add a second one, a third one, and so on. Just see what how it, how it kind of works out, what we need. If there is our seat, then we can get our little cedar barge. Uh, now, let's go ahead. We're about to... Oh, this takes the inside out. That's fine. It's not really a big deal. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some chains. And I'm going to go ahead and whip up like a stack of andesite alloy. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to pop down here and uh, get us some more dry grass real quick. All right, now we're going to be also making a fair few hoppers today. There's five of those. That's pretty much our barge. These uh, seven pieces right here, that's going to be the entirety of our little barge setup. Uh, let me go ahead and get more hoppers. I'm going to go with... Let's see, five, six minimum. Six, six should be good to start with, and then I will have to expand it because I'm going to be uh, making a bunch of... It's going to be producing a bunch of things. So, looks like our andesite alloy is done. Let's go ahead, get ourselves some vessel chains. We're going to need a fair few of these. I'm going to actually just go ahead and make the 24. And then the tug docks and stuff we're gonna need a bunch of gray concrete for this step let's see do we want to just make some gravel let's just make some gravel because uh, it is free but i may i mean i can always go out and vein mine it too let's go ahead and grab that out i'm just gonna put this away for right now i need to go out and get the last mystical agriculture ore that we need which is just purple um I need to go out and get it because we've got all the other flowers. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a bunch. We got Karma. You receive discounts from villager trades. Okay. I don't ever really trade much with villagers, to be honest. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some gray dye. There's Joe Mega. Uh, let's see. He was wanting peppers. He's building a big farm as well, so he was needing some pepper seeds. So. Uh, I haven't ate one of these, apparently. Alright, so our gravel is done. Let's go ahead and get this. And we're going to make ourselves some gray concrete. Let's see if this works. It does not. We'll have to actually... Uh, well, we can use the water fan. 
And we'll go ahead and throw this onto our water fans, get ourselves a bit of concrete. There we go. That'll get us going. Let's pop over. We are going to want to get ourselves a tug dock. I actually only need one of these, um, but two is fine. Uh, and then let's go ahead and get ourselves some barge docks. We're going to be going with five of these is what we're going to want. Throw those in there. Uh, and then we're going to want to get ourselves... Uh, let's get some vessel corner guide rails. Uh, do we want to make the rail workers bench? I think I've got some rails kicking around here, actually. I may even have some powered rails. We came across some, but I don't remember. I think I had to put them down for space. But maybe I put down the regular rails. I can't remember. Regular rails. I think I put down the powered ones. Okay, that's fine. So there's that. And then if we put this down and we throw in gold, we can get gold rails. And then beyond that, it's the same recipe. It's just a lot better output. There is our powered rails. Okay, now we're going to get ourselves a few of these vessel corner guide rails. Honestly, one craft. Probably be plenty uh, for what we're going to be setting up. There is the tug guide rails. I actually don't really need these. Uh, but something I do want is a vessel detector. Because we're going to be setting up some redstone to tell our tug when to move on. Okay, I actually only need one of these. So, we've got all this. Let's go ahead and convert the rest of this over into chests. Because uh, we're going to be using these. And I don't think there's much else I'm going to want. Uh, let me go ahead and get a redstone torch. Okay, now in addition, uh, I am going to want some redstone. I'm going to want some blocks to work with. Uh, for right now, it'll be fine if it's cobblestone. Uh, I am planning on decorating that out and making us basically like a like a little dock. Let's see. Right now, we'll just use cobble. Oh, I am going to want uh, this right here, tug route. I was surprised how cheap it was to get into little logistics on here. So, a bit, um, and the recipes were tweaked. They're, you know, they were a little bit more expensive, but not bad. Um, and then I think that's going to be good. Like I said, later on we will add maybe a little chunk loader to it. But Now the repeaters that we got from Create. I want an adjustable repeater. Yeah, we did. We got an adjustable repeater. Perfect. Might make a few more hoppers though. That way we've got just a little bit more storage here. Luckily this isn't really going to overflow uh, if it does back up. Uh, oh, and let's also grab some coal. We're going to go ahead and start off with three stacks. This actually lasts a really, really long time, so uh, we shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Now, the big question is, it's going to cost me three levels to warp over to the warm ocean. Do I want to go ahead and just farm up like a level and a, a bit really, really quick just so that we can go ahead and buy that trinket slot? I'm thinking yes, because I feel like it's a big waste to spend three levels there and three levels back at 33, you know, at 33 levels, so... Yeah, let me just let me just head over, kill something, or kill some things. Okay, so let's go ahead now and buy that. Uh, so now we do have that extra trinket slot, and we'll go ahead and grab some levels off that pig. And is it 40? Yeah, it's 40 levels to get another trinket slot now. Uh, we did get this one, so witches love us. Um, let's just take improved mining speed. All right, so let's just pop over to the warm ocean. Looks like Zerani is, uh, I think Zerani is setting up a spawner for Nautilus shells. Uh, but let's go ahead, is this, okay, Zerani's claimed that. We'll, we'll claim off in this direction. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's just bring this out just a little bit. And this is going to be where we're going to set up our tug dock. And we'll go ahead and set up our tug dock. And then we're going to set up our barge docks. Oh. Let's go ahead and grab that. Set up our barge docks like that. And then let's go ahead. Let's come out just a little bit from that. We'll just use our cobblestone. I will end up changing this. Um, like I said, I'm going to build something so that we've got uh, like a nice little decorated dock coming out of here uh, that our tugboats can uh, 
go around in, but let's go ahead right here. I'm going to set up a guide rail. And for some reason, I can't turn this thing. I want it to go like that. Okay. Normally, sneak right click works, but it's not it's not working at the moment. Uh, and then we're going to put in some tug rails. No. Like I said, normally if you just sneak right click, you can you can turn it, but it's not letting me. That's okay though, because we can we can adjust these. Basically, I want them like that. So if it bumps into this, it knows to come around. Uh, to come around this little area here, so. Alright. Let's go ahead now. And we're going to set up some hoppers. And some chests. And we're going to have this area here. We're going to be getting rid of the water a little bit. And we'll probably end up expanding out this uh, quite a bit. Oh, and Jomega just got cream of the crop. And right now, we're going to go ahead and put our hoppers in. Uh, basically, underneath our barge docks, we're going to have these feeding over. We're going to have another set of them facing in like that. Uh, so that way they can pull items from the barges as the barges come across. And then let's go ahead, remove that, and we're going to put in our chests. Uh, for right now, we're going to be using double chests, though long term, I would like to... Probably switch this over to uh, drawers and kind of a little bit more of a sorting system. But for right now, uh, chests will be great. Because I think trying to do like a, a big sorting system, it's going to be a little bit costly for us at the moment. But over time, we'll add some upgrades to this. But this, this is really going to be sufficient. The only thing is we're going to have to kind of stay on top of cleaning it out at the moment. But that's okay. And let's go ahead and do that. That way people can access it a little bit easier. Uh, and let's also go ahead and just claim this for right now. And then over here, we're going to set up a vessel detector. And we're going to have it setting basically right here. Uh, so it's going to detect... When boats are within three blocks, what we're going to be detecting off of basically is the tug dock. We want to detect uh, the tug being here in the front. And if it sees that tug, it'll emit a redstone signal. Uh, so let's go ahead. And I basically just want redstone coming up out of that. And I want it to go into an adjustable repeater. Setting here. Uh, and we're going to turn this up to, say, 10 seconds. We want to make sure it's got plenty of time to unload the barges. And 10 seconds should be good. It should be able to pull everything out through the hoppers to the chest uh, for our barges. And then, once that's done, go ahead and come out. Actually, I should just be able to do it right here. Go ahead and come out. And we'll probably clean up the redstone a little bit later as well, uh, make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, but we're going to have the redstone torch coming out of that, and redstone coming over the top of our tug dock. Because if this is powered, it's not going to let the tug leave, which is what we want to make sure and do. Because we don't want the tug to leave until it, basically all the barges are emptied out. And the reason we go with the adjustable repeater is because the tug hits it, it's going to emit a redstone signal. But it takes 10 seconds before the redstone signal turns off. Um, or before the redstone signal comes out the other end, thus turning off the redstone torch. That'll allow the tug to leave. It gives it 10 seconds to get out of there, which is more than enough. One second is plenty. It gives it 10 seconds to leave, and then uh, it'll basically repeat every time that it comes around. Uh, and then from there, uh, the only other thing really is to put... A hopper in. Actually, i tell you what. I think I want to move this back just slightly. Let's instead have it come in the back. I think this will just work out better as far as the placement goes. Uh, so let's have the adjustable repeater setting here. 
because I don't really want the redstone to run over the top of it. Uh, just because I do want my hopper there. And we're going to go ahead and put a hopper on top. It's going to automatically turn. <laughs> okay. You're so excited. You want the tugboats. Uh, it's going to automatically turn and face in the direction that we need it to. And now, really, what we have to do is just set up our little tug. Uh, now, what we're going to do first and foremost before we even set up our little tug is we're going to tell it where it's going to go. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to tell it basically right... No, not right there. Oops. I always forget. It does it based on player position and not... Because uh, I guess because it works better for the water. Uh, but we're going to tell it it's going to start right here. Okay. And it's important that we give it a lot of space because we don't want to overfish an area. So we're going to basically just come out a ways and basically set up waypoints. And it's going to follow these waypoints in order. And we're going to send it on a little bit of a journey. Actually, probably would be easier if I had a boat. But I didn't bring any wood with me. Maybe one of these islands. Yeah, that island right there has probably got wood on it. So I want you to keep coming along. And we're going to give it a pretty decent little area um, that it's going to cover. We want it to fish nice big space here. Because you don't want to fish in one spot. You know, it doesn't really help you much to have it go into like a really small area and just keep making circles because what happens is you overfish it and you're not going to get as good of stuff um, and, it, and, it, and as often that is too. Uh, so we're going to give it a nice big area that's going to cover. And so then you're going to come in basically right here. Okay. We're going to tell it that's where it's going to basically come into dock at that point. And if we hold this, you can say that's the area that we're covering. But I think we only have like 25 chunk loads, and I think it would be, yeah, it would be too much uh, to do it like that. Actually, I could probably get Severe to make me a chunk loader barge. Be like that. <laughs> make me a chunk loader barge, and then you'll have your shells. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh... Let's go ahead and set up our tugboat. And we're going to go ahead and add in our auto fishing barges and our cedar barge. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect our steam tug to the auto fisher, the auto fisher to the next auto fisher, and so on. Just right clicking these with our chains and just basically make ourselves a little barge line. And then we're going to take and we're going to put our little remote in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put our coal into this. And then we're going to put a stack into here. Then what's, what's going to happen is our little tug is going to start going. He's going to stop right in here, which is where he would normally, you know, stop. And after about 10 seconds, the detector, you can see there is redstone going through that. And then what's going to happen is the detector, once it goes through the 10 seconds... I never put the redstone torch on, so that's really not going to help us much. Okay, just a moment here. Okay, you just heard that beep beep. Um, now, it took a little bit because it was trying to make a sharp corner. You never really want sharp corners uh, normally, but you can see the nets go down for the auto fishing barges. And basically, if we take a look inside of this one, what we're going to see is fish and, and treasures and things slowly start coming into this uh, as it's fishing this area out. So... Uh, and we can basically just ride along this first little ride and just kind of chunk load things as we go. We've got plenty of chunks available to claim. I actually want... Oh, that's really, really weird. Okay, if you're moving like this... You kind of have to keep re-updating the map. And you can see, if we take a look here... Honestly, this area might be bigger than what we really need. I could probably cut it down a little bit because, oh, look at that. We already got a Nautilus shell. <laughs> Yay. And what's nice is we're going to be able to get, um, we'll also be able to get the like enchanted books, enchanted fishing rods, bows, all that sort of things uh, from this as well. 
Uh, but I guess I guess really though, if it has an Autolith shell, there's there's a chance it can still get more. Um, so honestly, I think this little area should be fine. Uh, I think we will we'll keep it going around in this. Uh, but then we got the cedar barge, so that we can just ride along with it. It's like take your Asgard to work day for the uh, the little barge. Then we'll take a look and see after it runs, because you know vanilla fishing, there's like a what is it, a 0.8% chance that you get a Nautilus shell. So it's really not bad. We we had to claim a few chunks, but like I said, I can probably cut off a few of those corners there. But it's definitely not something we're going to be able to chunk load with our uh, with our chunk loads. But let's see. Once we dock, we'll see how we did on our first pass with our little boat, and we should see the redstone actually work out this time around. Uh, so let's take a look here. You can see everything coming in basically through the hopper line. All these little barges are dumping off all their treasures. But this one is not... Yeah, there we go. Get in there. Uh, what I probably need to do basically to fix that and make it a little bit better is push these vessel corner guide rails out. And I'll probably have to wait. Boop, boop. Okay, uh, we're going to push this out just a little bit just to help it line up a little bit better. And we'll have it be out here. We could also use some guide rails just to send it on. Uh, but we did get a Nautilus shell there. We got an enchanted book with potato recovery 2 and sharpness 3. Uh, bunch of fish. I'm going to have phantoms dropping in. Let's go ahead and open these. See what we got. Uh, it looks like fish, maybe gold. All right, now chances are, if I had to guess, our steamboat is just hanging out. Where did my boat go? Our steamboat is probably just hanging out over here uh, because it's not chunk loaded. Yep, it's right over there. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little ride along with it uh, for just a minute. And then I do think We will probably go ahead and build a chunk loader. Okay, we're coming into port now, and I had an idea. I'm going to remove one waypoint so that it comes in just a little bit better, because right now it's it's coming over just a little far and then trying to come through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the tug remote. You can see after two passes, we've used like three call. Not even three, like two and a half call. Uh, but we're going to go ahead actually and remove this waypoint. So we're just going to stand right on top of it and right click. We're going to remove that. And then we're going to find the last node in the line, which is this one, which is our 14. We're going to go ahead and remove that as well. And then what we're going to do is let's just have it coming in, say, right here. And then we're going to set it right here. Uh, so that way it should come in a little bit smoother. And then we'll go ahead and drop the remote in. It's going to set out. Did we get any shells on that pass? We did get a Nature's Man fishing rod. I don't see any others. Uh, what I'm going to do. Let me grab my boat. I'm going to ride along with it like another round or two. Uh, basically because I am I'm editing some footage while it runs. And once it finishes that up. Uh, I'm probably going to take the remote out, shut down the little boat for a minute. And then we're going to see about making our chunk loader barge real quick. It's funny because these whales are very, very interested in what we're doing. They keep they keep coming up to the boats as I'm riding around in this. Severed is actually making us a barge right now. Uh, he said that's not a problem. He'll do that. He's been wanting shells really, really bad. I uh, was trying to fish for them. Of course, you can get them from, you know, mobs and things like that. But um, let's see if I can actually catch up with this thing. It's pretty fast. I just want to see what all it's got. Eh, I'll just ride around and check it. It's done a couple laps so far. So I'm just sitting in the boat right now editing while Severe does all the work making the barge. Like I said, we could pull it off. I mean, purple dye, another sheet metal, some aluminum plates. The Ender Overseer is not that bad. It's going to be quartz, redstone, some sandpaper. Uh, we've got the ender pearls, of course, the blaze powder, we have to kill another blaze, but no big deal. 
Uh, and then this, we would have to get the Obsidian and the Prismarine Shards. Prismarine, we can actually get that uh, from the loot boxes that this is fishing up. Um, but we can also get it from the little shales, the Project Vibrant Journey shales. Uh, we can also get it from that, because I do have one Prismarine Shard at the moment, I think. But um, but we can take... Let's actually see what we got from the box. Anything? It's probably something that's stacked. Uh, but this will actually produce like gold, iron, redstone, stuff like that from those little boxes uh, as well. So uh, we can also help it out since we're riding along with it. We can do that. Uh, I, like I said, I am planning on adding more fishing barges. And really, we could probably do with a little bit smaller uh, area that it covers. But uh, it's just to make sure that we're not overfishing an area, you know. Uh, but this thing uses barely any coal at all. Uh, we do have some boxes here. We'll go ahead and open these. Looks like we got feathers, bones, quite a bit of tin cans. Uh, message in a bottle. These are always fun. Uh, that one didn't really have anything interesting. Uh, we got some paper. Uh, we got a lock box. Let's see. Looks like more paper. Oh, there we go. So now we can get the, the automatic little thing there. We're going to go ahead and break that down. Uh, we've got that book. We got an Impaling 4 book. And a lot of assorted little junks and things. But there's some glowstone. Alright, let's... Uh, they're severe. Let's pop over. Actually, it'd probably be easiest for me to get some XP real quick just so I can come back. Probably easiest to get the XP here. I'm just going to kill some shrimp. There we go. There's 10 levels. And then, oh yeah, we got to get nether quartz because I didn't mine any. That's fine. We'll, we'll pop there and get some nether quartz. But let's go ahead... Let's go ahead and get the Eyes of Ender. And I did set a hopper up on top of this. It just makes it a little bit easier to make sticks. Uh, you know. There's our Abyssal Knight. Uh, we'll need the Aluminum Plates and the Purple Sheet Metal. And then we need the Nether Quartz as the main thing. Right here looks good. There's our Nether Quartz. We're going to get us a little chunk loader barge going. And that way, this thing's just going to run constantly. We don't have to worry about it. And then we'll just go ahead and polish these real quick. There is our chunk loader barge. Okay, so let's pop back over to the warm ocean. And we're going to plug this up to our barge line. And then we will be off to the races. Because this is going to keep it loaded. And we'll just put that down. And we're just going to attach it to our seat. And then all we got to do is go put our remote back in. It's going to go back to its first spot. And then it's going to basically turn back around. Once it reaches that spot. There we go. These are already loading up on stuff. And I didn't bring my boat with me. That's okay. And we're just going to let that basically do its thing now. Uh, it's going to run around. It's going to get fish for us. And it's going to start filling up these chests. Now at this point what we need to do is we really need to sort out some sort of storage for all this stuff. Um, it's going to have to be manual probably for right now. But that's okay. I just want to go ahead and empty this so that whenever we come back over we'll know what it's gotten in the time that we were gone. You know take a look at the conduits for each conduit because we're going to be using a lot of these we're going to need four nautilus shells now beyond that the rest of the stuff is actually super super easy nautilus shells are the big thing but i do want to cover heart of the sea it's actually very very easy to get in this pack uh, so we're going to be setting up for that at this point and then of course we have to do it through lightning but that's not a big deal either um, but we're going to be making Algol Lanterns, because with Blood Magic, with a little bit of Aquamarine, we can turn these into Hearts of the Sea. It's just going to require some Glowstone and some Algol 
bricks, which are kelp and clay balls. And then we'll take that and our kelp. We're going to make some algal blend. Uh, we can do this through the bulk blaster. So that's going to get us the algal lanterns. Now, to actually get the arcane ashes, a little bit more of a process, but not uh, super involved. We can do that with magic clay. Uh, which is going to be Enchanted Ash, which we get that from just smelting bones, which we can do through the Bullet Blaster. We are going to need some clay, we're going to need some mana powder, and we're going to need some Lapis Dust. There's our Algol Bricks. And so we'll go ahead and throw our Lapis into the Millstone. We're going to throw our bones into the Bullet Blaster. We're going to convert this over to a Source Gem. And then we're going to have to run this through the Millstone to get our mana powder. So let's go ahead and throw that in. There's our Lapis Dust. There is our Enchanted Ash. And then we're going to come over to our Whale. And we're just going to toss all that stuff in. Boom, there's some Magic Clay. And then all we got to do is grab ourselves some Demon Dream Fruit. Uh, we'll just set it right here. We're going to throw that on the ground. And we're going to light it on fire. And we're going to get this purple flame. Now this flame is pretty much infinite. Uh, but we can take our Magic Clay and we can throw that in. And there we go, we got Arcane Ashes. Okay, now what we can do is grab this stuff. We're going to take, we're going to put it onto the ground, say right here. Uh, we're going to put in our Algol Lantern and our Aquamarine, and we're going to get this going. And this is going to produce us a Heart of the Sea. <clears throat> very, very easy to do. Boom, there's our Heart of the Sea. Okay. And of course, we can do this again, get ourselves another Heart of the Sea. And of course, we need the four Nautilus shells. So that's going to take just a little bit of time uh, to get that. We do have this one here. Let's see how this is doing. It should have made maybe a couple passes. It hasn't been a long time. Uh, we got... Oh, it's actually in the port right now. That's perfect timing. Uh, we did get a Power 3 bow. There's another Nautilus shell. Did we get any more? Wouldn't that be nice? Boop, boop. Uh, we did get a couple boxes. A flame bow. Anything else by chance? Uh, we got a treasure chest. Let's open this up. We got a diamond. So we will be getting diamonds from this as well. It's just important that we keep it cleaned out, of course. And we'll be producing wood because driftwood is basically just wood. Uh, like planks and stuff. There's a few more boxes. And we're getting leather. Um, tin can. So we're up to three Nautilus shells at the moment. All right, now what we're going to do next is let's go ahead and we're going to get our conduits being made. We're going to go the charged snowball route, which is copper rod with our fluorite. Uh, let's go ahead and do a couple of these. Be fine. So go ahead and make me those copper plates. Then we're just going to hammer these out. There's our copper rods. Uh, I may have some fluorite here. I do. Grab our arcane ash. We're going to set this up right there. Right there. And go ahead and get our charged snowballs made. As you can see, conduits are actually super easy to make uh, in mass, especially with our little fissure, because it's just going to be producing these passively as well as a lot of other good things for us uh, so there's our charged snowballs and now if we take a look at our conduit uh, we are going to need two fluorite two lapis and a source gem four nautilus shells and a heart of the sea we've got protection three ender disruption three backstabbing two i love that because we are kind of stealthy so that actually could be pretty good we've got a capacity two riptide two We've got another Nautilus shell here, so we do have the four that we need. We've got Hammer Mobility 2 and Outlaw 3. There's another Nautilus shell. And then over here, nothing all that great out of this one. So, okay. So this has already produced enough Nautilus shells to make a conduit. And like I said, it's just going to be progressively, consistently running. Uh, so let's pop back over. A little bit of time did pass there. I think it probably did about three runs. Like I said, I was editing some footage. Uh, but let's go ahead. We're going to make our very first conduit. As you can see, super, super easy this way. So let's throw all this down. 
Uh, oops. Stop it. We're going to... Boom! We're going to grab that before it burns up. There is our very first conduit. Conduits, they're used for a lot of things. Most of our magic, we can actually make a cooking pot now. That's kind of a big deal. And I wanted to show you, I've been just kind of organizing this a little bit while I was editing some footage. And uh, kind of got everything slotted in uh, to various different chests. Now, we don't have any Nautilus shells at the moment. Xavian just came by and got some uh, to make a conduit. But what we can do at this point is we can go through and we can just grab all the things. Just kind of come down the line here a little bit. Let's grab a lot of stuff. And then we can just come over here, hit this button, and everything kind of gets sorted. Come down a little bit further, hit that button again, and there we go. Uh, the only thing that's not in here is like leather boots and water bottles because uh, we don't actually... We don't actually want to keep those, I don't think. Uh, so those I will just be trashing. Boom, boom, like that. And then we'll go through again. Empty this out. Treasure chest probably won't go anywhere either. That's fine. And let's go ahead and dump all of that. Like I said, treasure chest is supposed to go here. It would go in there now, just as long as there's one in the chest. Uh, now a couple things before we end out, a couple things of note, of course we do get the enchanted books and the enchanted items, which are all really, really nice. Uh, we can start building up a bit of enchanted books. Uh, a couple items of note though, 10 cans, we can use these to make 10, so, and we can do it through bulk blasting. Uh, so at this point we do have automatic free 10 coming in. Uh, fish bones, we can use this to make bone meal, which is quite nice. Uh, we do have driftwood, which is a a great building block we have leather coming in um over here let's see we have messages in a bottle just for fun uh we do have these which we're gonna get into those a little bit here in just a moment we got jellyfish coming in uh which bulk blast those for slime balls so we have those goldfish we can break these down to get gold this is gold ore so then we can uh you know process that as we normally would uh, gold, sending it through the the millstone of the crusher and then washing it, which is quite nice. We do have wood coming in, uh, which can be used basically in place of any kind of uh, like wood. And we can turn that into driftwood planks, so quite nice. Uh, we got name tags, we got bones, rotten flesh, uh, lily pads and things coming in. Uh, and of course we have these, these are the big things. Let me just put this stuff up here. Let's grab these. It means they won't slot, but I'll, I'll slot some more in. But if we open up all of these boxes, you can see we got all this different, uh, basically all this different stuff here. So we are getting coal and stuff. And what we get, we'll just dump into here. Uh, we got lock boxes. Oh, we got a book. Uh, we got redstone, nether quartz, stuff like that coming in, which is quite nice. And then we do have a treasure chest, and we got an emerald in this case. We can get emeralds, diamonds, really good stuff out of those treasure chests. But, like, if you're playing single player and you're not on a server, you know, you may have to scale this out a bit more for it to be as useful. But since we're on a server, this is going to be perfect for us. Because it does mean that we're going to have a lot of the stuff coming in. And there's a lot of stuff that has varied uses for us, like free gold, always nice, free tin, always nice, especially since I'm planning on using a bit of gold for my build, uh, that's going to be extremely beneficial to us. But anyways, with that, I know it's wrapping up point four this episode, so we're going to end this one out here, uh, and then next episode, the world is kind of our oyster, we could probably start magic starting next episode, because we do have a conduit. And probably by the time we start next episode, we could probably have a few conduits if we wanted. Uh, though, like I said, I did already give Xavian some Nautilus shells. I know Severed's wanting some. And there's probably going to be some other people that are going to want some Nautilus shells. Like I said, you can get them from exploring and going around the ocean and stuff. But if you just want an automated way to have them coming in, since you do use them a lot, fishing. Fishing is the way to go. So uh, we will do a little bit covering like aquaculture uh, fishing, manual fishing on camera, not necessarily just setting and fishing, but just go through that. We just don't have time this episode. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.